Hi YouTube, this will be a video on how to get your computer um, to run very quickly and make it feel extremely snappy and responsive when you use it, which makes for a really, really fun experience when just navigating your PC to do even normal stuff. So what I'm going to do is restart my computer real quick just so you know that nothing has been preloaded and then I'll launch a bunch of applications and navigate through my system a little bit just to give you a feel for the kind of speed that I'm talking about. And then after that I'm going to go through some hardware and software tips that can help you achieve similar results and hopefully you can take away some good information from that so just to get started here I'll do a quick restart and once the operating system loads we can get going but uh, it's always good to have um, good computer hardware to begin with it doesn't have to be amazing but just having a mainstream processor um, just a decent amount of memory at least four gigs eight is preferable that really helps with this but uh, just to start I'll launch Real Flight software, which is a um, which is an RC simulator program. It's uh, graphically intensive, so it's not a light program by any means. But you can already see that it's loading up pretty quickly. And here it's fully loaded, and I can just start flying my helicopter right off the bat. But if I want to get out, I just hit F4 immediately, and it's gone. I can launch Word, Excel. Chrome, PowerPoint, uh, iTunes, Windows Media Player. All these programs launch very quickly, and I, and I can tab through them. And, and the system is very snappy and responsive. If I want to navigate my file system, I can go to my C drive and just kind of start clicking away, and things will start opening and happening very quickly. So um, that's largely due to the uh, solid state disk. Let's do one more here. So, but you can see that's all really responsive. And uh, some of the way I, some of the ways I achieve this kind of speed and just quickness is starting right after I do a fresh install of Windows. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go to um, System in your Control Panel. I'll go to Advanced System Settings, and the first thing I'll do is turn off System Restore. Uh, I know that's not for everyone, but because you know it's nice to have the security of a backup but uh, I do I do backups anyways on my own and I, I I like to know if I get a virus or something that uh, I'd rather just reinstall Windows because that's just how I like to do it but turning this off will really um, free up some system resources so after that I'll go to the advanced tab to under performance I'll go to settings and adjust for almost best performance not quite but I'll turn off everything that has animate, fade, or slide in front of it, and that helps the user interface just become really snappy. Even if you leave Windows Arrow enabled, which I like to do. Advanced tab, keeping your virtual memory set at zero, uh, having no paging file in your, on your C drive is immensely helpful, just for keeping everything running in your RAM instead of on a hard disk, which, which is certainly a lot slower. Another huge thing you can do that will help with boot times, is to launch MS Config, which will open your system configuration menu here. And if you hit startup, everything in this list, everything that's checked anyways, is a program that will launch whenever you start your computer, whether you plan to use it immediately or not. So a lot of times as you install more programs and use your computer more, this list can get tremendously long and fill itself up with things that you don't even know what they are. So I like to keep mine completely empty just to get, let the system just boot immediately and then I can decide from there what I want to do but I wouldn't recommend just clearing everything and hitting OK because depending on what you have installed you might be disabling something that's critical so I would uh, use caution when disabling things so and if you don't know what they are especially I would I would probably recommend leaving them alone but uh, another thing I do is go to the boot menu and hit this no GUI boot uh, icon here that will you probably didn't notice when I restarted my computer but that just disables the little splash animation that window ha Windows has going on when it starts up so that turns it off so you don't have to load it so hit apply hit OK another thing I'll do is go to power options and just set it to be the high performance setting that'll keep hard disks from turning off after 20 minutes or you know keep your processor running more quickly so that's been really helpful let me think what else to do here. Um, for for browsing, anyways, when using 
Chrome or whatever browser you use, I found it's been really helpful to set your DNS server. So if you go to Network and Sharing Center, open, change in advance, well, not that. If you go down here, open Network and Sharing Center, change adapter settings, go to properties. If you set the properties on IPv4 and 6, you can you can click this radio button that says use the following DNS server addresses and this 8.8.8.8.8.8.4.4 is a Google DNS server you can set one for IPv6 as well I'll show you where I got these from in a second so if I go to Chrome and I Google Google alternate DNS you can go to the second one public DNS and this will explain what what you're really doing and why it helps. But it, it helps an awful lot with just browsing. Another thing I like to have on Chrome is these two extensions. One is Ghostery, which disables um, programs that that track your your behavior online, it keeps you more private. I found that's helpful for speed as well. AdBlock also just prevents ads from loading which is really nice it's it it makes your screen look more spartan and it doesn't throw ads at you so I found that to be really helpful I like using Chrome just in general because it's convenient it's got a low profile and I'm just I just get the feeling that it's the fastest so I really like to use that um, as far as your hardware goes I definitely recommend like I was saying before having just a mainstream processor at least and I'd highly recommend getting a solid state disk, at least for your primary drive to hold your operating system and uh, applications on. The one I've got now is a Patriot Pyro SE 120 gig one, and it's uh, I keep the the firmware updated. Uh, same thing with my BIOS and my motherboard. I've got a uh, Z77 chipset board from ASUS that I, I keep the BIOS updated all the time. Keep your software updated as well, and when we're talking about software, I would only recommend installing what you're really going to use, and I definitely recommend using custom installation settings instead of express settings, because that way you can avoid installing all kinds of toolbars and things you don't need that just eat up system resources. So I highly recommend just paying attention whenever you install software. Um, RAM, I don't know if I said how much I have, but I've got 8 gigs of RAM, which isn't which isn't a ton by today's standards. I wouldn't recommend less than four, but you can certainly get a very fast system with eight. And uh, I think that's about everything. So I really hope you've uh, you've gotten some good tips out of this. And uh, thank you for watching.